Oh, hello there. Welcome to Iceland. Okay, a little hotel room tour. Ours is based on like the theme of the room is some Icelandic poet that I do not know, but very cool. Little closet. I'm still in my winter gear, um, but this is so cute. They have him. In dreams of every man, his fall is hidden. You travel through a dark, uncharted wood. It's the bed, and then we have some more pieces of artwork. I love it. This is like my favorite corner. I'm gonna sit there so much and read, read some books, and then trees, trees and cold, and then oh I didn't get this in the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> the bathroom. We've had a very long, hard day of travel. Um, shower looks so cute. I love this like older tiling look. I love it. Um, so that is the bathroom. And look, this flushes the toilet. So cool. Okay, anyway. So, that is that. It is about... What time is it? It's 12? 12.50 Icelandic time, which is almost um, 9 o'clock. 9 a.m. our time, so... Very tired, have not slept.
are going to the top of the volcano. Why am I talking like this? That Fograd is fuel. why the lighting is extremely yellow right now but welcome to iceland jet lag is killing me i've never experienced this amount of jet lag before because i haven't really been anywhere with a massive time jump but um i'm four hours ahead of what i'm used to so i'm extremely tired and as well like our flight was at 9 p.m my time but we got here at 6 20 a.m iceland time so like i lost all of that night's sleep because i didn't sleep on the plane at all but yeah I'm in Iceland. Welcome to the Iceland vlog. I've already bought two books. What else is new? But we have been doing so, so much. It's been so fun. The first day we got here, we like picked up our car rental and then we drove into Reykjavik. Just kind of explored some random things yesterday. But this morning we woke up early because we had a lava cave tour. So it's like you go through this tunnel or cave that you know lava has carved out which is really cool that was really fun and then we went to um Falgradisfjöl. Fjöl. I'm gonna really try with these names that is a volcano that we hiked up which was kind of hard not really um but you can see all of the cooling like it is pretty much cooled um lava that has hardened and solidified and turned black and that was like so cool because i've never seen a volcano before and we got to the top where you can see like the caldera and stuff so yeah so cool and then on the drive back from that we stopped at a few other places just anywhere we wanted to like turn off and see which is really fun we found like this random cave next to the ocean and then we also stopped at this like hot spring kind of place it is 10 o'clock and i'm about to wash today off of me and go to bed because tomorrow we are waking up to go to the blue lagoon which is probably one of the most famous spots here in iceland so yeah it's been really cold but not too bad yesterday was really really bad and really really windy like 
hurricane force winds and it was so it was so cold but today was a really nice day and tomorrow looks like it's gonna rain all day so hopefully not because we have a couple of things planned tomorrow actually we'll be leaving this hotel this is in Reykjavik and we'll be going to stay in one in a different hotel more on the southeast coast just for a couple of nights and then we'll come back here because like this hotel was kind of included in the Iceland air package. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. In Budin. Oh my god. A whole vegan grocery store. That's incredible. I'm gonna cry. So this is where we're staying tonight. I think it's someone's sheep farm. There's a few people. And what? <gasps> oh, babies. I'm so happy. Hello. Okay, I want to live here with you. Do you want to live here with me? I'm so happy. I, oh, I'm just loving this so much more than Reykjavik and I think I could stay out here for like forever. We are currently hitting up some vegan fish stuff that we bought at the market. So I just wanted to come out and bother the sheep. <laughs> it is so quiet. And right across the street are a couple of glaciers. Um, I'm just so happy. Oh, wow. Oh, this is so cute. Good morning, everyone. From not Reykjavik, um, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation. We are currently in Vosvoldur. Um, That was very wrong, but we just woke up. We just had some breakfast. We we're staying on like a, it's not an Airbnb. It's not, I didn't rent this through Airbnb, but it is um, not a hotel, it's like part of someone's sheep farm. It's kind of like a little farmhouse apartment situation that we're just going to be staying in for two nights while we explore more along the southeast coast. So yeah, I am obsessed with it here. Like I just look out and see mountains. It's just so pretty here and so, so quiet, like so quiet, even with the window open. There's hardly anyone around. There's only the sheep. Um, 
which is so fun and I cannot believe it, but it's sunny right now. The sun is out. It's a beautiful day. This is the view from outside the window. I cannot believe the sun is out. It'll probably start raining, but we are about to head out to Skogafoss, which is a waterfall. Um, I think mostly on our itinerary along the south coast, we have a bunch of waterfall hikes. There you go. But we also have a cave tour again booked today, which we may or may not get to. I'm about to pack my bag. Also, I've been obsessed with these that I found here. I've never seen these in Canada. <laughs> They're so funny. They're called Oak King. And then they have, I guess this is the Oak King on them. So I'm really jacked. Um, chef. These are so good. They're like just oat bars, um, but they're so delicious. I've, I bought a bunch. Um, anyway, these are like my new favorite thing, so I'm probably gonna buy a bunch before I get on the plane back home, but, um, yeah. I used, we used a French press this morning for the first time because this came stocked with like kitchen essentials and everything like that. I don't know how warm I'm gonna dress. I think it's only four degrees right now, but it's, I think it probably feels like zero this is where we are right now oh it is supposed to rain all day okay well that's a little sad yesterday we went to the blue lagoon in the morning which was really cool it was raining the whole time we were in there too so it was nice to be able to submerge in like nice hot water um that was fun and then like when you're in there you get like a little drink there's like a in the water bar drink place where you can get a free drink and like a mud mask and it was just it was really nice and then we came out of there and then we just stocked up on um gas they use diesel here which i was not expecting and we had to ask someone at the gas station how to use it because it's much different from our gas stations <laughs> but then we went to an all vegan grocery store um and i cried i cried in there <laughs> because it's just like um been something for so long i never thought i was ever gonna see like to step into a supermarket or a grocery store and know that you can buy anything everything know that you don't have to look at the labels know that you don't have to triple check to see if there's animal products inside it was just like a literal like a dream come true it felt like i was in some sort of utopia where like i could eat everything off of the shelves and it was just something i've been dreaming about for like six years now so yeah that was like surreal it's called vegan budin um it's in Reykjavik and we did buy 150 krona kronas worth of groceries there so the food here is very expensive which i kind of knew um but yeah much more expensive than what i'm used to It's frickin' Halen.
Hello, I'm in Reykjavik hotel bathroom. <laughs> um, my partner's chewing very loudly on some protein bars, so I thought I'd give a little update. In here, we are back from, I guess, the southeast of Iceland where we stayed at Kvihomi, which I highly recommend if you're like booking a trip in Iceland or something. It was such a nice place to stay. It was just um, on someone's sheep farm and the sheep were like outside the window all the time. You could hear them going meh all the time. It was just so sweet. It was like I lived my little dream life for a couple nights there and it was just so lovely. It's just like a nice little flat that you have all to yourself with like a kitchen um, that's stocked with everything you need and of course a bathroom and bed and it was just like the cutest little place um, and I loved it so much. So I just thought I would do a little recap of everything we did because I didn't film too many updates while we were there but the first night we pretty much just got there and clocked out. We went to um, the vegan budin which I was talking about and so we got a bunch of food from the grocery store because food here especially at restaurants but also in general is very expensive so definitely getting food at the grocery store is a bit better plus um, it's just easier being vegan to just buy your own food but the first day we went to Skogafoss when we woke up in the morning which is a big waterfall um, that was probably one of my favorite days of the trip so far not even Skogafoss itself because waterfalls like I, yes I like waterfalls but um, they're not like my favorite natural phenomenon but the hike like once you get to the top of Skogafoss up a big big flight of stairs and um, the hike goes back for like 24 kilometers which obviously we didn't do but that was one of my favorite things because there was so many nooks and crannies and like little rivers and gorges and rock formations and sheep everywhere um that we got to that was one of my favorite things we did was just the hike um behind Skogafoss which you can you know turn around whenever you want another one of my favorite things was just something you can pull off very quickly on the side of the road it's called Rootshed Lair it is one of the many like man-made caves that are on the south uh, coast of Iceland there's over like 200 man-made caves not made by the Vikings which is really cool like I feel like I've learned so much. Anyway, so one of them is called Ruth Shedlier, which means Ruther's Cave. Shedlier, I believe, is cave. Um, and it's just so cool. There's so many like myths attached to it, but you can like go inside, you can see. Um, it's pretty big. And if you go on Wikipedia or something like that, like it is generally called Iceland's largest man made cave. But something we also did um, yet, no, today, no, yesterday yesterday um, was we went to the caves of Hetla, which are these huge, way bigger caves um, that have recently been opened to the public for the last few years, like since 2017. Um, and they are much bigger and they have a huge story to tell. So the caves of Hetla is like a guided tour. These caves inside, like you go inside, the turf house is pretty much um, built in front, right? So the turf house was a Viking, I guess, invention or something um, that the Norwegian settlers, the Vikings, brought to Iceland. But if you go further back past the turf house, there is a man-made cave. I guess one of the biggest... Um, Theories for the cave is that they were made by the Irish or by the Celts, um, by Celtic monks who came to Iceland before the Vikings ever, ever got here. So the tour was really, really interesting because she told us so much in the case of Hetla, um, which is in Hetla, Iceland, about the Irish and the Irish coming here. And like, there is a huge um, debate and disagreement and it seems as well that there's like a uh, inclination or tendency to wipe away the Irish history in Iceland, it seems, because that's what she was kind of talking about, but it was so cool to see, like, um, the caves that I think definitely, at least the way she was explaining it and the history, um, were made by the Irish because one of them was, like, a church, um, and a very, like, Christian Catholic type of church. There were crosses carved into, um, the walls. Of course, Ireland has a bunch of man-made caves um, in it as well and the same kind of like stove and stuff. Anyway, it was just so, 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 so cool. Once a year, the Catholic church in Iceland, it recognizes it as Iceland's oldest church. They have mass there, um, but so cool. I was so into the whole 
caves thing. I think it was phenomenal. And the last thing we did that day, um, a, a couple days ago, we also went to Salyalandsfoss, which is another waterfall. So you basically pull in, um, you have the big Salyalandsfoss, which you can walk behind, which is really cool. But then if you keep going down the path, there are a couple other waterfalls um, and one of them you can kind of get in if you are willing to like soak your feet and run into like this kind of scary looking cavern. Um, I totally could have done it, but it was getting really dark. And of course there's no lights in there. Um, so I didn't go in all the way, but it was so, so cool. So that was just like phenomenal day.
And then our last day before we came back here, so today before we turned around and headed back for Reykjavik, we went to the very famous Black Sand Beach or Reynes Fjord. And then the last thing we did, this was probably almost this is my favorite thing ever. We went to a glacier um, very close to Reynes Fjord. The glacier is called Solheima Jokul, if I'm saying that right, because I think Joklar or Joklar is glacier. Um, favorite thing, cried my eyes out. I am a big fan of glaciers and ice and um, I think especially after reading Ice Fields, this is so random, which has been one of my favorite books of this year, like seeing all the components of a glacier in real life for myself, like touching the ice because you can get right up to it. There's tours that you can walk on the glacier, which we didn't do, but just it's like no, no words. It's like one of the loneliest things. It, it gave off such a lonely feeling to me. I felt like such a huge pull in my chest towards it. It was the most like incredible thing. Like I just sat there <laughs> dumbfounded and silent and stupid with tears streaming down my face. Um, yeah. So that was definitely, definitely highly recommend going to see it because it's obviously receding going very, very quickly, but it's so beautiful. It doesn't even cover it. So yeah, that was Surhaima Yokul. On the way back, we really quickly stopped at a smaller waterfall called Irafos, and then in Selfos, which is a very, very nice, cute little town, I did go to another bookstore. I already went to one the very first day we got to Reykjavik, because of course I did, that's in Reykjavik downtown. Um, but then I just saw <laughs> a bookstore on the side of the road in Selfos because we stopped for food today, and I went in and I bought more books. So I'm not gonna do a book haul yet, I'll save it for like the last day of the trip just to because I, I feel like I have no self-control here I'm just gonna buy more books but um, what we have planned for tonight is the Northern Lights tour at 9 p.m. so once again gonna go grab some dinner before that and hope I don't get too too seasick like I've never had the opportunity to test whether I get properly seasick or not because I've never been on a big boat or a small boat or any boat in the ocean. So, um, we'll see how that goes.
Okay, back in from a very cold night, and can I just can I just say that these pants are literally so warm, so nice and warm. I'll have them linked below. I've just been so impressed with these. I've been wearing them like every single day. They are technically ski pants. They're so warm, even in the like insane wind. Okay, I also got a couple t-shirts. So this is the first one I got. It's just nice and oversized and it just says Reykjavik. I love it, it's very cozy. And then, no, 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 no. I also got this red one, <laughs> also oversized. And this one, oh, it's so cozy. And it just says Iceland, so yeah. Those are those two that I got. <gasps> ah, I love it. I already put my pajamas on because it's cozy. It's so comfy, cute. Okay, so I'm gonna finally do a book haul. I went to <laughs> three bookstores here so far, um, and they were all so nice, and I ended up getting six books, which I did not mean to do. The first day I, was it the first day here? Yeah, the first day here on uh, Sunday, I bought two books and I was like, okay, that's it, I'm done. I really wanted to just find some Icelandic books um, because I'm really interested in that, but also for my around the world challenge and also because like I'm here, I'm in Iceland, I want to read um, their literature while I'm literally here, which has been amazing. And I've actually finished the first one that I got, but then we went to another bookstore on the way home from Kvihomi and I bought two more books. This was in like a bookstore cafe in Selfoss, so then I bought two more. And then I went to another bookstore in Reykjavik, um, the same bookstore. I think it's called, like I said, Painen Eidmundsen, Eidmundsen, one of those two. And then I bought two, two more books. So, um, we're gonna see if my suitcase is gonna fit these all, but I will take you through the ones that I got. So, this one I got here in Reykjavik, and I've already read it, and that is The Blue Fox by Sion. I've already read this, and I did enjoy it, although I'm still, like, kind of thinking about it and mulling it over. I think in the end, it's probably gonna be, like, three and a half, three point, maybe three point seven five stars, but this is about a priest who goes out hunting this like mythical blue fox that is super prized for their fur um, and he goes out hunting even though he really shouldn't be because a huge like storm is coming and he does end up um, meeting some consequences on the mountain but then the story also interweaves it's very like fairy tale-esque it's very much a fable with this other man named Friedrich Fridjonsson and um, what he's doing because he has taken in a girl with down syndrome who was found discovered tied to like the timbers of this ship that um, was stranded in i think the port not of Reykjavik but of somewhere else um, and how all three of their stories kind of interweave and intertwine anyway i really liked um the different sections because it's split into sections that are very short at the beginning which is nice they're like little vignettes and then we have like a longer narrative of Friedrich and then um we have some more poetic endings at the end anyway it was really good and I'm really glad I read it so that is the first one that I got books here are so damn expensive it is crazy this was um 3399 krona which is like $30 Canadian, maybe a little less than $30 Canadian for a short paperback, which is crazy. Um, but I did want to buy some books in Iceland, so I did. Um, the second one I got is also another piece of Icelandic literature, and that is Under the Glacier by Haldor Laxness. Uh, this looks really, really good. I'm so excited to read this. So this is more of like, a, I think, dark comedic novel where we have this um, parish and we have this priest again <laughs> on a little spit of land and he has decided that he's not going to bury the dead anymore. He's um, given up that job. He's not going to do it anymore. And so authorities from the church are sent out after him to see what the hell is going on in his church. Why are we not burying the dead? Emissary finds that the dereliction counts only as a mild eccentricity in a community that regards itself as the center of the world and where creation itself is a work in progress. What is he to make of the boarded up church? What about the mysterious building that has sprung up alongside it? That his wife is rumored never to have bathed, eaten, or slept. 
Um, it just sounds really cool, really funny, really wild. Um, just like this community that has absolutely gone off the edge and I'm just really, really excited for it. So I've heard really great things. They have so many Haldor Laxness books here. I don't know if he's like their most well-known novelist, but every store I go into, even sometimes that aren't bookstores, they just have Laxness's books and, um, like a lot of his quotes I've seen in like science, sci uh, not really science, but like when we went to the Perlin, which is like the natural museum, natural Icelandic thing, museum-esque exhibition, um, his quotes were everywhere. So really excited for Under the Glacier. There were a lot to pick from, but I wanted this one because it sounded wild and it, of course uh, there's something to do with the glacier. Okay, these next two, um, this one I'm in the middle of and this one I am really liking. I'm already liking it so much more than the Blue Fox actually. Um, it's incredible so far and I'm only 14 pages through, but this could be like one of my favorite books of the year. And this is Heaven and Hell by Jon Carmen Stefansson. Wow, so good. First of all, this is stunning. So beautiful, look at the spine. Ah, back. So they had, did they have a few of Stefansson's books? I don't know. But this is about a guy who's fishing for cod. Cod is like Iceland's biggest fish and a tragedy occurs on his ship and he's like oh my gosh this is so tragic but like his fellow fishermen are just kind of very stoic about it they don't really care and he's shocked at the lack of um reaction from them and so he decides he's going to leave um leave the boat and he eventually ends up on an adventure to deliver this old book to is it a priest again is it a priest no it's a blind old sea captain beyond the mountains once in the town he finds that he is not alone in his solitude welcomed into a warm circle of outcasts he begins to see the world with new eyes um to be honest the synopsis of this did not sound super interesting to me i didn't really care too much about it but once i started to flip through here and just read random lines i was like oh my god i'm not very far in but so far i feel like the narrator is um is our author or some modern icelandic person talking um kind of narrating this story that we've only received in like bits and pieces which is really interesting and the quote on the back like it was really the writing that pulled me and it says it's not possible to thread the tears together and then let them sink like a glittering rope down into the dark deep and pull up those who died but ought to have lived and so far, I've just been underlining so much. In the first sentence, chapter one, this was during the years when we were surely still alive. Anyway, so that is the third and the last um, piece of Icelandic literature I got. And then the next three are not from Iceland, but still very exciting. So this one I also got at um, Sadafoss. I totally forget what the store was called. I think it might have literally just been called Books and Coffee. Um, that is The Palace of Dreams by Ishmael. Kadar, Kadare, Kadar. This one I've heard about and I really wanted to read. I love the vintage editions. This is a piece of Albanian literature, I believe, unless I'm really wrong. Yes, this is a portrait of like tyranny, but it's kind of giving me 1984 vibes, but much cooler. The Sultan has this palace called the Palace of Dreams, where all of the citizens' dreams are stored and kept when they dream them and so then the government has the power to sift through their dreams their wants their wishes their unconsciousness and kind of control them really really good and it was banned upon publication in 1981 yeah i'm just very excited i forget where i heard about this but this is probably the one i'm gonna read for albania so and i got two more these next two i also got from Eidmundsen in reykjavik just a different store so i got two little tiny ones because these are two editions of penguin that we don't have or that i've never seen print printed in canada um you have to get them online so the first one is their penguin modern classics um what is what is this actually properly Called. just the penguin modern classics but it's the tiny ones so i got the legend of the sleepers by danilo kiss kiss um this is from i think yugoslavia anyway i've already read this <laughs> i finished this last night and it was really good so this is two short stories we have the legend of the sleepers which is a retelling of the biblical myth of the seven sleepers which were seven people well it depends on which version you read there's like four to seven or three people and a dog or seven people this version had three people and a dog um who during the persecution of christians under the reign of the emperor decius in like 250 AD, um they decided that they were going to sleep through the whole persecution and then 
wake up at a time when it was over. So this chronicles them waking up in their cave. And then the other short story is called Simon Magus, who um, is going around at the time of Peter, Simon and Peter, the apostles, and basically being like Christianity is wrong. Um, and then he's trying to prove that he can also work miracles. So this was just okay as well. I think I gave this probably gonna go with a three and a half or 3.75 once again, but so happy. I love these additions. They're just so gorgeous. And then th these editions of penguins, these are called the Great Ideas um, collection, I guess. There's like 40 of these and like 50 of these. Um, I've never seen these either, so I was so excited. And I got Conspicuous Consumption by Thorstein Veblen. Um, unproductive consumption of goods is honorable. So this is like a satire on capitalism and consumption and um, just overzealous eating, buying, drinking, everything like that. Um, so this looked, I don't know, this just looked really fun, really interesting, very tantalizing, provocative, if you will, and it's gorgeous. And they had so many of these. I really had to hold myself back. Um, but yeah, these were two of the really least expensive ones I got because they're short, but that is everything that I got. And I got to finish the blue fox here, which was just superb being able to read this like on a sheep farm. Um, a lot of this does take place on a farm as well, and that was just really cool. And I am in the middle of heaven and hell, so I'm gonna keep reading this. Um, but yeah, tonight is our last night here in Iceland. Very sad, so I'm probably gonna go to bed soon because um, we have a very long day of travel tomorrow. Six hours back to Pearson on the plane, and then obviously we have to get from the airport to the train station and from the train station to home. So. Yes, I'm very excited to see Kelsifer though. He's been having an absolutely fantastic time at my parents' house. Like I've been getting uber amounts of pictures and he's just, he's having a really good time there. So I'm very happy, but I miss him so bad. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was my little book haul from Iceland. Um, I love getting books as souvenirs. That's probably, there's always the thing that I want most from any new place I go to is books, obviously. It usually is, so yes, anyway. I will wish you a fond farewell and I will maybe catch you tomorrow on our day of travel. And if not, thank you, Iceland. It's been perfect. It's been wonderful. And um, thank you for watching. I'll probably see you very soon in my next video. I hope you enjoyed. If you've been to Iceland, if you live in Iceland, please leave a comment. Um, if you have any recommendations for next time, because I could definitely see myself coming back here, leave them down below. But Thank you so much for being here and I will see you when I see you.